hanging out with Kurt Ballou from Converge. How you doing, man? I'm well. How are you? I'm pretty good, man. Pretty fired up. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for taking the time. Not a problem. I love reverb. Yeah. Thank you, man. I like to we, buy. I like to sell. Yes. We are very well aware, and we're very happy that you use reverb and that yeah. you have a reverb shop and that you promote it all the time. That's really yeah. I mean, I think I think it's an excellent resource. Um, even like when you're not don't need to do any commerce, just to like learn about learn about gear. Not only just the you know the stories that you guys post, but um, just as a as a as a resource for researching stuff. Yeah, it's really fun. That's exactly it. That's what we're trying to do. So happy that you that you interact with it, man. Yeah. In the last couple of years, what is the best or most useful piece of gear that you've bought for a hundred bucks or under? I'm completely blanking. Five hundred bucks or under. Five hundred bucks or under. Um, Oak Sound Soothe. Wait, do plugins count? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Oak Sound Soothe is a new favorite plugin of mine. Awesome. Um, I find like you know in the world of digital recording, I find it's like a wonderful way. A lot of like things that like warm up audio tend to like just yeah. sort of low pass the whole um, signal. And this like is like a it's like a dynamic EQ that seems to be best around like the 4K range. Yeah. Like so, where there's a lot of like harshness either in a guitar or um, or like cymbals, but also like low like lower priced mics or like. Mm -hmm lower quality digital converters a lot of times will exhibit a lot of like ringing or just like all around like crappy sound in that right. region and oak sound is uh soothe is an excellent way to like sort of tame that stuff and make it just kind of class it up so i've really been enjoying using using that plugin yeah but yeah oak sound soothe killer killer piece of gear i could awesome. i could probably go all day on that but i'll uh we'll keep I'll it stop. at that yeah. well that's a very good recommendation and so it's funny that you pointed out a piece of studio gear or a plug-in for somebody that you know maybe isn't familiar with you and your work if yeah. they ask you what do you do are you first a musician or your producer or do you consider yourself an engineer first how does that go into nowadays um, I just consider myself a creator um, awesome so I uh, whatever whatever is like necessary to get the job done so if I need to like record a band or if I need to like play on a record if I need to write a song if I need to build a pedal if I need right. to um, help you know, interface between a band and their record label or mastering or whatever, like whatever it takes to get the job done. Like what I, my goal is to just be creative all day. Right. Um, and if I'm being creative all day, then I'm, then I'm happy. So whatever's like standing in the way of the path of, of creation. Yep. Like I just want to like knock down those barriers so I can like get to making music or making That's amazing. art or making a piece of furniture or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, like whatever I'm setting out to do. Um, I just, you know, just be very uh, pragmatic about that and um, figure out what needs to get done and get it done. Uh, amazing. And when you are at home and you're in like the creative zone, what does your day look like? When typically during the day do you start creating? Whatever it might be. Um, well, I have, a, I have a new son, so I get up in the morning with him and have some family time for a few hours. Mm -hmm. And then I head into work at, at my studio and um, you know, gen generally it's like recording bands, mixing mixing records. Um, I do like pedal building stuff at home on days off. Um, sometimes when I've got some free time, when he's like napping and stuff right. like that. Um, so it varies. But I think what what's what I really enjoy is that like not every one of my days is the same. Right. Um, you know, sometimes I'm mixing record. I actually have a home mix room as well. So like sometimes I'm mixing at home. Sometimes I'm mixing in my studio. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm. You know, engineering. Sometimes I'm producing. Sometimes I'm on tour. Right. Like right now, playing shows. So the fact that I have an opportunity to do a lot of different stuff is really exciting for me. That's and, amazing. Um, that that's what matters most to me. That's amazing. That sounds like a great way. To yeah, live I, your I day feel to day. like really fortunate that I've been able to do what I do at the level that I've been doing it, like for a number of years now. And uh, never thought I'd get to where where I'm at. And it's uh, it's exciting to be here. Well, we congratulate on you on, on all you. those achievements, man. Um, speaking of, you know, how you live your day to day and stuff, like the batch of pedals that you're selling on the road every night, you whip them up before each tour. On this particular tour, um, I, my my assistant and I from the studio, um, he and I built this stuff prior to the tour. Right. The previous leg of this tour, where we were on, we were on the East Coast. I was on the back of um, our bus or backstage building really? pedals. Yeah. I brought like a a, um, a road case with like soldering iron, a bunch of components, and a bunch of circuit boards that I'd ordered before. My dad's a machinist, so I'd go to his machine shop and right. like pre-drill all the enclosures. 
And um, so I just brought, you know, a bunch of parts with me. Yeah. And um, it's like whipping up pedals backstage and stuff and then sell them that night. A lot of, you know, there's a, there can be a lot of downtime on tour. Right. And uh, I don't do well with downtime. I just like want to be creating something all the time. Absolutely. It, it gives me a lot of anxiety about starting tours because I know that like it's I'm like kind of hurry up and wait. Social person. Yeah, there's a lot of hurry up and wait, but I'm also like not a super social person. I get right. kind of like, um, yeah. So like having uh, a place to like nerd out and like, yeah. um, like, you know, fo focus my energy on something creative during the day has been really nice. And it's also been like a really awesome way to meet people on tour and a really nice sort of like financial bonus Absolutely. every night like that I get to sell some pedals on the road. So get, get a little bit extra money too, which is awesome. And speaking to that, has the reception been just Yeah, it's been awesome. really cool. It's, it's like fun. It's like actually, it's been good for the band too because like there's a certain subsect of like pedal fan nerds that like Absolutely. show up early so they can like get to the merch table like where as soon as we open. Like, like last night I sold five pedals within the first like 10 minutes of doors being open. Amazing. Yeah, so that was amazing. And I'm just like, one of the reasons why I'm at NAM here is I'm like working on trying to find some manufacturing partnerships. Okay. So to like take some of the load off me so that I can like offer more pedals to more people. Um, so is that where you see the future of God City Instruments going? I hope so, yeah. Is that yeah, something you I want to take? I, I really enjoy making records and right. to become like a, a manufacturer of equipment mm -hmm. um, is... Uh, so a, a dream of mine, but also something I'm not able to devote myself to full time without stopping making records, and that's not something I, that I want to do. So right. I need to find a way to delegate a, l a little bit. Right, because you're pulled in so many different directions. Correct. Um, as a as a member of you know a very well like known band that tours the world constantly, any particular piece of gear that you found maybe abroad in the last couple of years that you're like, I need this right now. Ooh, abroad? I don't know about that, but like one or of the things like so. One of the things that I'm known for is um, my business card. I know, I which I was going to ask you about so. as well. Check this out. This is probably the coolest business card in the music I actually, industry. I came to Nam like only once before, like about five years ago. Right. And um, I had I had this idea when I was at Nam like five years ago. Like a lot of people have like weird business cards to like yeah. get people's attention. Like Kevin Kevin Burkett from uh, that guy over there um, from Electrical Guitars. Right. Um, he had like a a stainless steel laser cut business card but it was really rad i was like okay what kind of like cool business card could i do and i had this idea to like put a distortion pedal um circuit on a business card and um this one is actually based on a pedal that i found touring japan wow okay um, awesome. called the providence stampede it's um the stampede has like a power transformer on it it right. like runs on like 100 volt japanese power but converts it to like plus minus 18 mm -hmm. and it's uh it's like an active backs EQ. This this one's like way simpler than that. It's a just right. like nine volt unipolar, and um, it uses it has this like loudness control, which is like right. a, a bandpass filter that's like on a crossfader, yeah. so you can kind of blend from like maximum bandpass to like no no bandpass, and it, mm -hmm. it it mimics the curve of the CMP. So it's it gets the flavor of that pedal without being a direct clone. Right. Um, but yeah, so like it was really fortuitous that I just like happened to find that in a music shop, and it became like my go-to sound for mm -hmm. a number of years and then later became like the inspiration for this business card that kind of like went viral so i think that was like an important gear find for me it, it it's a phenomenal concept if you didn't quite catch that you can actually turn that oh, into yeah. a full function and yeah pedal. so i've been selling these things at our shows and i also have them on um my jake the singer of my band has a record label called death wish and their site's death deathwishinc.com and i have a, i have an e-store on there and the business cards are for sale there if you want to if you want to buy them. I think yeah. they're like seven dollars, and then you can like get a parts kit for like forty bucks somewhere else, and, um, and have fun. At, at like Small Bear, and uh, have fun building it. Exactly. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the new record. Okay. Yeah, because it, it's it's phenomenal. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Um, when I hear Converge's discography, I hear a band refining its sound more and more. How crazy do you drive yourself when it's time to sit down and record a new Converge Records? How crazy are you finding those sounds that you want to hear come across? It's, um, it's really emotional for me because, like, like when, when you're playing live shows or like when you're writing songs or whatever, like you can always sort of like put off the final project until right. later. Whereas, like when you're recording, like that's forever, and uh, there's a microscope on it, and you're like face to face with all of your own 
inabilities at that point right. because there's no like putting it off till later. So like whether that's like getting a tone or my performance or the sound of the mix, like I mean it's a lot of pressure on me personally right. too just because I'm doing so many of those things. Um, but also like when it comes time to like the final thing, I'm just kind of like, is this as good as I can do? Right. And um, I, I tend to forget from album to album how much work actually goes <laughs> into making it. And like this, this particular album I had, um, I think my son was about four or five months old right. when we were, we were doing that, which, you know, so I wasn't sleeping a lot. And right. um, he was like requiring a lot of my time too. So it was a, it was a challenge for me to have like the mental capacity to um, make the record on the level that it, that it needs to be made. So it was, it was tricky, but um, I actually haven't listened to it since, um, wow. since we finished mastering. Um, and I probably won't. Like I'll, I'll put it until, like, until I have to like relearn a song or something right. like that, I won't listen to it. Interesting. Um, just because it's like, it's like too emotional for me to like hear that result and like, you know, think about all the things I could have done better or something. Right. Or, the, you know, sometimes the opposite happens where I like, listen back to something and like it'll be great and I'll be like, well, how come what I'm doing right now isn't as good as that? Right. And then that's emotional for me. So I just kind of like, I sort of put my past output aside as best I can. It, does somebody in their band or somebody else step in and tell you, this is ready, it's time to let this go? Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of times that's just sort of dictated by the schedule. Right. But um, yeah, I mean, my, my bandmates are, are um, excellent sounding boards for me. Awesome. Um, good, good critics. They keep me honest. That's very cool. But there's also there's like a level of nerdery that's like at a level like beyond what they're interested in mm -hmm. um, that matters to me. That that I I'm the only one driving myself crazy about that. Okay. And, and speaking to that aspect of things, any new piece of gear that you utilized on this record that you hadn't tried before, or maybe a piece of gear that was what worked the most on this record? Yeah, well, I mean, like, so Oak Sounds Smooth right, again. Um, and uh, another thing, I, I use, like, um, Fab Filter Pro Q2 a lot. Right. Um, I really enjoy the analysis tools in that. Um, one, one new trick I, I tried a little bit on this record with that was um, that has an EQ match feature. Okay. So you can, like, pipe some, um, some stuff into it through an aux input, and um, It'll analyze the spectrum of, of whatever's coming in through the aux and then try to match what's what the plugin is inserted on um, to that EQ spectrum. And I don't really use it to match other sounds, but I use it as like an informative tool. Like if something feels off and you're just like, well, what is it? And, and, and mm -hmm. then you realize like, oh, wow, it actually has like way too much 200 hertz. Right. Um, but there's really creative uh, uses for that function as well. Like you can EQ match, say, the overheads to the guitars. Wow. Okay. And then and then reverse the direction of all the gains. Mm -hmm. So basically, or like guitar to bass or something like that. Things like the things that compete, you can EQ match them and then reverse the direction of all the gains. Mm -hmm. So like everywhere where like everywhere where you, where you would need to boost a frequency in the cymbals to make the cymbals sound like the guitars, yeah. you can then cut. Right. Um, or or do it vice versa. So it, it'll, it can allow you to find space in a mix for other things. Right. Even if it's just to like inform you of the frequency content of things and then not actually use that plugin. Right. I find that to be super useful. Um, I think the other thing I did in this record was I was really disciplined about not overdoing it with my guitar sound. Because okay. I have a lot of amps in my studio and I tend to like line them all up and go like, well, this one sounds really good. And I like that one too. Right. And there's something cool about that. I'll just use them all. Right. And then you end up with like, you know, the more mics you have and the more amps you have, like any like telltale characteristic of one sound, oftentimes, like even if that has a cool characteristic and this have a cool characteristic, sometimes those two characteristics will mask each other. Right. You know, mask right. each other when you use them uh, together. And it's often better to just use one so that you can get that like, you know, that this is like a there's like a greater depth to nuance of tone right. when it's when it's simpler. So it, it requires a lot of discipline on my part to have a more simple to setup. Kind of tone it down because um, I have all this like nice gear that ends up not getting used when I right. when I do that. So most of this record I recorded um, out of an Emperor 612 with um, with a, one of three different distortion pedals or, or gain pedals that I make and um, and mostly my. Uh, mid-70s JMP head, 
Scott DeBockler from SNK Pedals, he actually just did a bunch of work on my JMP and he put some like uh, mil spec Phillips 6 CA7s awesome. in the power amp and it's like, and now it's like the world's greatest guitar amp. Although on this tour, I've been using the new Sound City stuff that um, really? Fryat has issued and it's really incredible. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Well, it's a treat to hear you kind of refine your, your production sounds and your engineering skills record to record. Um, so it's awesome to get this kind of insight into how your brain works in the studio. Yeah, I mean, it's always a, it's a journey. Yeah. You know, and I, I, at this point, I feel like it's more just like morphing and like lateral moves so much as right. I am like honing in on perfection. Like I'll probably never settle on anything when it comes right. to gear. I just enjoy like the process of like using this for a little while, then using this other thing and kind of exploring. That's very cool, yeah. as it should be. And then just to kind of wrap things up, um, what does the rest of your year look like as far as Converge and Ooh. projects? Well, um, Converge has many uh, trips planned to Europe awesome. this summer. Uh, a lot of different festivals and stuff. And um, I have tons of records I'm doing. Um, I think the first thing I'm doing when I get home is High on Fire. Awesome. And then really um, cool. I'm doing a Joyce Manor record. Um, uh, mixing Author and Punisher. Um, uh, I'm doing Zeal and Adder. Um, so, and there's a lot of other stuff I'm spacing on. So right. I have like a very, very full schedule this summer. Um, both with uh, touring and making records. So well, that's exactly what I want. For such a busy guy, we really appreciate you taking the time to talk to hey, us. Hey, not a problem. Thanks and for having keep me. Rocking. For sure. All right, cool.